Falcon 9 and Heavy are the workhorses of today's SpaceX fleet, but without the Falcon 1, they never would have flown. The first successful flight of the Falcon 1 is likely one of the most impactful launches in the history of spaceflight. I'm going to get into the story of SpaceX and their first rocket in today's episode of Rockets in 10 Minutes or Less. Elon Musk's first brush with space was Mars Oasis, a plan to send a greenhouse to Mars. He went to Russia to try to buy a rocket from them, but they literally spat in his face. On the flight back, he turned to Jim Cantrell, one of the founding members of SpaceX, and said, I think we can build the rocket ourselves. And they did. In 2003, development was started on the Falcon 1. The first order of business was the creation of the Merlin engine. Its first iteration was the Merlin 1A, a gas generator cycle engine that runs on RP-1 and liquid oxygen. It was also ablatively instead of regeneratively cooled. A combination of fuel choice and the inefficient cycle of the engine conspired to give it a 253 second sea level ISP with a 300 second ISP in vacuum. The turbo pump also provided the high pressure kerosene for the hydraulic actuators, eliminating the need for a separate hydraulic fluid, eliminating a possible failure mode. The turbo pump was also designed to provide roll control by actuating the exhaust outlet. This was needed because the first stage of the Falcon 1 was powered by only one Merlin, making roll control through engine gimbling impossible. The tanks of the Falcon 1 were constructed out of aluminum and utilized the common bulkhead between the RP-1 and liquid oxygen, and there were two onboard parachutes, one drogue and one main parachute. These were designed for first stage recovery, although they were never used. The second stage is powered by the Kestrel engine. Its pressure-fed design used heated helium to expel the propellants and achieves a 317 second specific impulse. It used electromagnetic actuators for pitch and yaw control and cold gas helium thrusters for roll control. A pyrophoric T-TEB igniting system was used for multiple restarts of the Kestrel engine. The first flight of the Falcon 1 on March 24, 2006 ended in disaster. A nut in the Merlin turbo pump feed line was eaten through by the saltwater atmosphere in Kwajalein, which incidentally was chosen due to range availability issues at Vandenberg. And when that engine was started, kerosene spilled all over the engine bell, starting a fire that ended the mission just as it cleared the launch pad. The second flight of the Falcon 1 on March 21st, 2007, almost a year after the first flight, was another failure. This time, the first stage burn went well, but during stage separation, the inner stage fairing, colored black in this image, bumped into the engine bell of the second stage, and this led to circular oscillations that were increased by propellant sloshing. This was supposed to be dampened by the thrust vector control system, but the bump the first stage caused also caused the thrust vector control system to overcompensate, adding to the oscillations. Eventually, the second stage shut down at 7.5 minutes, and although the boilerplate payload did not make orbit, it did separate, and SpaceX declared the mission a success, as 95% of the mission systems were tested during the flight. After this flight, the Merlin 1A engine was swapped out for the improved Merlin 1C, which bordered a 264 second sea level specific impulse and would be installed on the remaining three Falcon 1s. The third flight of the Falcon 1 on August 3rd, 2008, was flawless up until stage separation, when the first stage had some fuel evaporate after stage separation, causing a small burst of thrust that crashed the first stage into the second stage. The only change that was implemented for the fourth flight was the addition of a short period between first stage burnout and stage separation to allow for the evaporation of any excess fuel. This small change allowed SpaceX to put the first commercially launched payload into orbit. This fourth flight was a game changer for SpaceX, who up until that point were on the brink of bankruptcy, with all their chips on the success of the Falcon 1's fourth flight. And despite all the blood, sweat, and tears that SpaceX poured into the Falcon 1, it only flew one more mission, where it launched the Malaysian Rezaksat Earth Observation Satellite, the only operational payload to be put into orbit by the Falcon 1. Despite such a short operational lifetime, the Falcon 1 was crucial in SpaceX's development. It acted as a proof of concept, and the Merlin engine, first used on the Falcon 1, is still used today on the Falcon 9. When it comes to rockets, the Falcon 1 is proof that sometimes big things come in small packages.